Hi everyone, Frank M here. So I've learned quite a bit since uh, my last chlorine video, so I have decided to remake my video on that element. Now, chlorine is all around us. Um, it's found in the table saw we eat. It's found in important disinfectants like pool chlorine, also known as calcium or sodium hypochlorite. It's found in this hydrochloric acid, very useful stuff. It's found in laboratory solvents like chloroform. Um, but in elemental form, chlorine is much less nice. In fact, it's quite deadly. It was used as a chemical weapon in the First World War. So let's get started. Now chlorine is element number 17, located in the halogens group. Now these halogens all lack one electron. They have seven electrons, but they want eight. And they're very, very angry about it. So when they're in pure elemental form, they will react often violently with surrounding materials to get that extra electron and become negatively charged. So, here's the chemical reaction I will be using to produce elemental chlorine. I will be using hydrochloric acid and potassium permanganate. Now, potassium permanganate is a potent oxidizer. This manganese atom has a charge of positive 7. That means it's very electron deficient. It's not very happy about it. So, it's going to snatch those electrons from the negatively charged chlorine in HCl and liberate elemental chlorine gas. Now, in elemental form, Chlorine is a highly toxic yellow-green gas, and exposure to this substance is very, very painful. So, I highly, highly recommend working with chlorine either in a fume hood or with a respirator. Let me put this on before we get started. All right. Now before I get started working with chlorine, let's check all these safety items off. One, goggles. These need to be these need to be sealed. Getting chlorine gas in your eyes is very painful. A respirator, so I don't destroy my lungs. A fume hood works too. Gloves. And a lab coat. Alright. Now this is not this is not required, but I recommend it. A spray bottle of sodium bicarbonate solution. Now, when you want to get rid of chlorine gas, if you spray this bottle at the chlorine, it will neutralize it back to sodium chloride. All right. So here's how this is gonna work. This addition funnel contains hydrochloric acid, our source of elemental chlorine. And that solid in there is potassium permanganate. That's going to be our oxidant to turn Cl- into Cl2 gas. Now, the elemental chlorine is going to fill that flask here. Then bubble through this solution. This is a solution of phenolphthalein and sodium hydroxide. Now this is a strongly basic solution currently, but that will all change once the chlorine bubbles through. Chlorine converts to hypochlorous and hydrochloric acids in, on contact with water. Now that's going to neutralize the sodium chloride of uh, the sodium hydroxide back to sodium chloride, and then is going to acidify this solution and turn the purple phenolphthalein indicator clear. Now, one of my demonstrations of the oxidizing power of chlorine is to bleach the indicator in this litmus paper. The chlorine uh, oxidizes the indicator in here to turn it white. So I'm going to place that just above the phenolphthalein solution. Now, let's open the addition funnel and start producing the element.
start slow so I don't overpressurize things. And there it is. Now, over time, the air in the system will be expelled, and you'll start to notice a yellow-green color. There. Now some of the air is being expelled, and as chlorine fills the system, the chlorine will start coming through and acidifying the solution. You can already start to see the yellow-green color in this flask where the chlorine concentration is highest. Now, the chlorine is going to fill this flask from the bottom up because it is a heavy, denser-than-air gas. That was one of the reasons it was used as a chemical weapon in the First World War. It would sink into and linger in the trenches. And believe me, this gas is not a nice way to die. Alright, I can see the phenol phthalene solution starting to change colors. And the litmus paper has turned white. The elemental chlorine has oxidized the uh, indicator. Now, you can also use pool chlorine to produce elemental chlorine. But I found that uh, hydrochloric acid and potassium permanganate gives you a much cleaner result because the two reagents I'm using are much more pure than pool chlorine. Pool chlorine's got sodium carbonate and calcium chloride and other things that will decrease your yield. Oh, now you can really see the yellow green color in this flask. Now the phenol phthalene solution has cleared up. The chlorine has acidified the uh, solution. That solution now contains sodium chloride, hydrochloric acid, and hypochlorous acid. has been filled with chlorine gas. Let's test some steel wool on it. Now notice again that the uh, chlorine is sitting in, in the flask because it is heavier than air. Gases don't behave that much differently from liquids. So let's light this. And there it goes. Now that brown smoke you see is iron chloride. The chlorine, much like oxygen, has rusted the steel wool. This is just iron chloride instead of iron oxide. Now, I will demonstrate to you my method to clean up chlorine. So, spray, again, spray bottle of sodium bicarbonate solution, baking soda. Now you may notice the green color, the yellow green color is starting to fade. Sorry about that guys, it clogged a little bit there for a sec, but there we go. So you've noticed that just about all of the yellow green color has now disappeared. So if you want to get rid of chlorine gas, spray this around for a while, it works pretty well.
Now, last, but certainly not least, I'm going to burn a very strong reducing agent, sodium metal, and chlorine gas to make table salt the extreme way. Now, for best results, I'm going to heat the sodium red hot. It's probably kind of a bit of a smaller piece. Make sure it doesn't spill out. Now I want to heat until the sodium starts glowing. Perfect. Now let's lower this in. Ah, more heat. There we go. Now let's be a little quicker this time. There we go. Pretty cool, isn't it? Lights up the whole room. Now that white smoke you're seeing is tiny particles of the same table salt you eat at the table. Well, at meals, I mean. I wouldn't recommend eating this because it is likely contaminated with sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate from the sodium metal. My reaction bubbled over a little bit. That's okay though, I can always clean it out. So, so that was a lot of fun. Sodium metal is definitely my favorite chlorine reaction. Uh, I recommend uh, experience in the chemistry field before you work with chlorine. Um, it's very dangerous stuff. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next video.